Is Namibia on your bucket list? Let me tell you, you're not going to be disappointed. After traveling to over 30 countries, Namibia has easily taken its spot among our favorite destinations. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing everything you need to know before planning your trip to this amazing country. I'll also be timestamping each category below, so if you want to jump in to a specific part, you can check the description. And lastly, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Ali Hobart, and along with my husband Sumner, we've been traveling all over the world and sharing all of our adventures here on the channel. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Without further ado, let's get to it. First are visas. Most countries are not required to get a visa in order to enter Namibia, but there are certain countries that do, specifically those in East Europe. But regardless, it's always good to double check. And the website that I highly recommend you to use is called Sherpa. I'll make sure to leave that in the description below. I'm always using this website because you can input your passport, so where you're from, as well as where you're coming from, and it will tell you not only about visa requirements and if you need to apply beforehand or if you could get a visa on arrival, but also any other requirements that you might have entering that country. So if COVID is required or specific health insurance, or if you need to fill out a form, this website will tell you everything. So be sure to check that before you start planning. Next is health. Now there's no mandatory health insurance that you need in order to enter the country. But if you want to have that ease of mind, as we do, no matter where we go, we usually travel with the safety wing travel and medical insurance, which in my opinion is extremely affordable. So if you're interested, I'll be sure to leave the link in the description below. When it comes to vaccines, there's also none that are mandatory for you to go, including COVID. Now, if you are going to a region that is prone to malaria, then you are actually going to need to take malaria pills. You can go to any pharmacy and say that you're looking for malaria pills and they're just going to ask you how long you're going to stay at the specific region, like for example, Etosha National Park, and how many days you're going to be there because you're going to need to take pills starting two days before you go to that region every day, as well as during your stay and seven days after you leave. So that is what we did and it was very easy. We had no issues with that. Now, mosquitoes. We were told that we needed mosquito bracelets, that there was gonna be a lot of mosquitoes in Namibia. And I don't know if it was because of the time of year that we went or if it was because of our accommodations, we weren't really camping, but we didn't have issues with mosquitoes at all. Even when we left the windows of our lodges open or when we were out hiking, we didn't have any issues and bug spray was more than enough. However, if you're camping or if you're going to a region that is more prone to mosquitoes or it's a specific time of year that you want to check if it's more intense, then you might want to purchase some of these mosquito bracelets that you can find at any outdoor or camping stores. Now, there is something called the Tsetse Fly, but that is specific to the Caprivi Strip in the very north that type of fly is a little bit more dangerous that you want to avoid. It could give you um, fever and diarrhea, things like that. So in that case, if you're going there, you might want to purchase the bracelet as well as wear bug spray and avoid wearing black and navy color clothing as those tend to attract those types of flies. When it comes to your trip itinerary, you have three options. You can join a group trip that has already been planned and those usually you pay an agency, you go, you just have to show up and be a part of everything that's being planned for you. Number two, you could have an agency build an itinerary for you and take care of your accommodations and car rental and all of that. Or number three, you can do it yourself 
which is what we've done. And I know it could be a little bit intimidating, especially if this is a destination that it's very new to you, like it was for us. But trust me, it was very easy. And after you watch this video, you will see that it is really straightforward. And that actually saved us thousands of dollars than if we had gone with an agency and we ended up with the same trip or better because it was more custom to what we wanted. In terms of duration, most trips will vary from three days to 15 days. Of course, you can go less or more, but that's going to depend on the destinations that you want to visit, as well as how fast paced you want to go through those destinations. Now, I'm going to cover that soon, but Namibia is very vast and there are some long distances to travel by car from one main destination to another. So you have to take that into consideration when you're planning your trip. So for us, we chose to do a 10 day Namibia road trip going through the best destinations of the country and as well taking into account the time for driving and not going super fast paced in our opinion. And if you want access to our detailed 10 day itinerary, I'll leave a link in the description below and you can download it for free. Next is transportation. Now I'm assuming that you're going on a self drive trip, just like we did and not going on a guided tour that you have someone else driving for you. So in this case, here's what you need to know. You will definitely need a four by four car. Now you could get away with going with an SUV that is a four wheel drive, which is actually what we accidentally rented, but we did end up having issues by not having a four by four. So highly recommend renting a four by four car. And there are plenty of rental car agencies that you can rent from like Europe car, Hertz or Thrifty at the airport, but you can also look online for more local rental places. What we did is actually we used the website called around about cars, which to be honest, we weren't a hundred percent sure that it was legit up to the point where we received the car, but I can testify that they are legit and we found the best prices using that website. So basically what you do is just, you perform a search, put all of the details, like you want a four by four, the days that you're going to be needing the car. And then once you make your reservation, you're going to send them a payment via direct deposit or a link that they send you. And again, we thought that that could be a scam, but it's not. And then once they receive the payment, they're going to send you the voucher of the actual rental place where you're going to pick up the car. So in our case was from Europe car at the airport. So everything went well and we had no issues with that. Now, the reason why you need a four x four is that yes, you will encounter some asphalt roads, but the majority of the roads are going to be dirt roads and it's not only safer for you to have a four x four, but there are destinations that you can't even get to if you don't have that type of car. And as far as speed limits, it is very important that you don't go above 70 kilometers per hour when driving on dirt roads. You're actually 50 times more likely to die from speeding than from an encounter with a wild animal or anything else across the country. So make sure to be safe and also avoid driving at night. We actually had a delay one of the days and we were driving at night for about one hour and we were extremely tense. We had to break multiple times because there were animals crossing the road. So be safe and avoid driving at night and also avoid super long stretches. So Namibia is extremely vast and the destinations are not super close to each other. So it is important that you have enough stops for you to not outstretch the amount of driving that you're going to do. Because if something goes wrong, you might have to drive in the dark or have to find other alternatives last minute. For accommodations, there's plenty of sites and lodging for campers and overlanders. If you're overlanding, be sure to rent all of the proper equipment and get all of the necessary instructions when you're renting your car. 
Now, if you're wondering if you can actually get good hotels, the answer is yes, which was very unexpected for us because there was so much content about camping throughout Namibia that we weren't sure if we're going to find good hotels, but we found great options at every destination that we went to. Not to mention there's even luxury, all-inclusive options if that's what you're looking for as well. For us, we paid an average of $150 per night and we really liked every hotel that we chose. They were all great options at very good locations, great staff, and a lot of them even had both breakfast and dinner included. If you want to know exactly where we stayed, that's going to be in our detailed itinerary that I'm going to leave the link in the description below if you want to download it for free. In terms of food and water, first things first, always have plenty of water with you in the car as well as when you're out for hikes. If you ask locals, they will tell you that it is safe to drink from the tap, but us personally, we never want to take chances, so we always make sure to load up on water whenever we pass by a market or a grocery store. When it comes to food, most meals are meat-based, so if you're into meat, you're going to absolutely love the food in Namibia. They are known for having some of the best steaks that you can eat worldwide. Now, unfortunately, there's not going to be a lot of options if you are vegetarian or vegan. Most of the meals we had were actually Western food. It was very difficult to find typical Namibian food for some reason. A lot of times they would have some kinds of Namibian spices or some Namibian tweak to those Western meals. But in general, honestly, they were all extremely delicious. We loved everything that we ate during our trip to Namibia. Now we ate mostly at or around our hotel because as I mentioned, a lot of hotels will include both breakfast and dinner. And even if they don't, a lot of the hotels will have their own restaurant and the food that we had there was very delicious. Now, if you are camping, I would recommend that you stock up on groceries when you pass by the major cities, that being Vinduk, Luderitz, and Swakamund. There is going to be other markets and grocery stores throughout Namibia, but they're not going to have a lot of variety. So stock up at those destinations. And of course, you can also enjoy the delicious restaurants around those places. When it comes to clothing, it's very important that you check the weather for the time of year that you're going to visit. We went in September and we actually experienced both cold and windy as well as very hot temperatures. For example, going from Swakopmund to Etosha, we experienced a 30 degree Fahrenheit difference after driving for just six hours. So definitely bring lots of layers so you can be prepared for both as Namibia does have this unique weather condition depending on all of the destinations that you want to visit. And there was actually a situation where we were out on a boat tour and it got so windy that I caught myself wishing that I had brought gloves to my trip. So it can be unexpected, so be sure to check the weather. And another item that I'm so glad that I brought was actually my hat. To be honest, I bought thinking it was just gonna look cute, a safari outfit and so on, but there's a lot of desert throughout Namibia and I was so glad that I brought a hat, not only desert, but also wind and everything. So highly recommend bringing one as well as wearing plenty of sunscreen. And lastly, in terms of colors, they always say that you should avoid red to not scare wild animals, as well as black and navy colors to avoid, as I mentioned, attracting mosquitoes. But to be honest, we wore all kinds of colors and we had no issues because the majority of the time we're actually inside the car. Activities and tours. Trust me, there's plenty of fun things to do in every destination in Namibia. From hot air balloon rides to boat tours, quad biking, skydiving, safaris, the list goes on. And we were able to book about 95% of them 
online in advance. So we're able to either reserve or pay online. And a lot of those companies, they use WhatsApp to communicate. So when you're on their website, you might see the little WhatsApp icon. And I highly recommend using it because it will make your communication and the reservation much quicker and easier as well. Now, there are some tours that they don't really have a set price. It's based on tipping. So they will take you along the tour as a guide. And then at the end, you would kind of pay them whatever you feel like. So I would recommend asking locals how much would be a fair price to pay for that tour. When it comes to prices, to be honest, Namibia was not as cheap as we expected, but you can find prices that vary from cheap to luxury for pretty much everything. For us, we tend to go in the middle ground and if you want to see exactly what we spend in all of the major categories, you can download the detailed itinerary in the description below. Now, it is important that you always have some cash on you because although you can use your card for most restaurants and shops, and tour agencies, there are certain things that you will need to pay in cash. So it's important to always have some with you. And there are ATMs across all of the major hubs throughout Namibia. Now, one thing that is interesting is that you can also use the South African Rand in Namibia. So if you're traveling through South Africa doing your trip as well, you can actually use the same cash. And as of right now, they have pretty much the exact same conversion rate. Is Namibia safe? Sumner and I felt extremely safe doing our entire trip in Namibia. Not only safety around wild animals, and a couple of times we did get pretty close to some, but also when it comes to crime. There was no situation that we actually felt in danger that we're going to be harmed or there's going to be stealing. However, there were a couple of situations that were uncomfortable. And that is because some people will actually come and ask you for money. A couple of times when we parked our car or when we stopped to get gas, people would come to either blankly ask us for money or do something that we didn't really ask for and expect payment in return. So they might want to wash your car or fill your tires and then ask you to give them some money. Now, locals recommend that you don't pay them, but in our experience, for some of those situations where they did something for us, we felt like giving them a tip, even if it's small, was better just to get rid of the uncomfortable situation as soon as possible, but it is completely up to you. One thing that will most likely happen is that when you park your car, guys will come guard your car and they will expect payment in return. So after asking locals, they said that anywhere from five to 20 Namibian dollars is more than enough but a lot of them might want you to pay more because they know that you're tourists, they expect you to have more money. So what I would recommend is for you to first enter your car, turn it on, get ready to leave, and only at the end, lower your window and give them the tip and not really pay them before you get in the car or they might wanna haggle with you to try to get more money. But again, we felt incredibly safe in Namibia and the people were extremely friendly as well. When it comes to phone service, honestly, there's only two operators that work throughout Namibia, and that is MTC and Telecom. So what we did was as soon as we landed in Vinduk, we both got SIM cards from MTC. But honestly, the lines were extremely long, both when we arrived at the airport, but also when we were leaving Namibia, we noticed that as well. So if you can wait and get it at another time, maybe go to your hotel first, if you're staying in Vinduk, and check with your hotel if there's another location where you can purchase nearby, that might save you some time. 
However, I will say that the coverage was not amazing either. Even though only two work, the coverage still wasn't the best. There were several instances where we had no phone signal or data because Namibia is super vast. There's a lot of desert, so I wouldn't necessarily completely rely on them as well. So in that case, when it comes to driving, what you can do is download the app called maps.me where you can plan your trips and driving in advance and then use it while you're offline. And when it comes to Wi-Fi, honestly, all of our hotels had pretty good Wi-Fi coverage except for one that only had it at the main area, but they still had it, so no big deal. We still had no issues staying connected. Last but not least, when it comes to filming and taking photos, we had no problems whatsoever throughout all of our trip. We were always welcome and never had anyone giving us issues or saying that we weren't allowed to film anywhere. Now, Namibia can be very sandy and dusty depending on the destinations that you go. If you're going to the desert, it's important to try to protect your equipment, bring those little air things to remove the sand, but no issues at all. However, when it comes to drones, you will need a permit in order to bring your drone into the country. If you don't have a permit, they will confiscate your drone at the airport and I cannot guarantee that you're going to have it back. So you need to apply for a permit. They say that you need to apply at least 120 days before your trip. But we actually encountered someone during our trip saying that he applied within a month, if not three weeks of their trip. And although it took a lot of back and forth, they were able to get the permit. So just know that in advance. And that's it. Now you have everything that you need to plan this one of a kind adventure through Namibia. And again, if you want to download our entire 10 day Namibia itinerary, the link is going to be in the description below as well as in the comments. And if I forgot to mention anything or if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to watch our entire Namibia playlist where we take you along all of our adventures with beautiful animals, landscapes, and some unexpected situations. So I'll leave that here on the screen and in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you at our next destination. Until then, bye.